Hi, this is Gregor from Basenable.com and I thought it's time to give you a little update on the bases we are using here in the studio. I made a video like this like one year ago or so and uh, just ran wildly through this uh, room and showed you all the stuff uh, we got here. But uh, this time I would like to focus on the bases only. If you want to see more, if you want to have another video for the amps, for the pedals or whatever, just let me know in the comments and uh, we can make this happen. Another reason why I'm doing this video is because recently uh, we got a sponsoring from uh, König & Meyer or better known as K&M Music Stands. This is a German manufacturer who is uh, very well known for building high quality stands like microphone stands, bass stands, everything that stands and <laughs> has something to do with music. So um, something as you can see that's very much needed here. Um, so let me show you a couple of their products or the stuff we got from them and then let's move on and let's see all the bass porn going on. Uh, first of all, this is probably the most important part from the shipment from k &M. These are the Memphis Pro uh, stands. As you can see, they fold really small together, which I really like for traveling when you're going on tour or if you're going wherever you're going to bring your stands, then this is a great thing. and. Um, they are very easy to build up, just extend the thing here, it extends to all kind of heights you could need. And uh, what I really like about these stands is that you can use them for all kind of uh, bases. Um, the problem here and the reason why I contacted k &M and I thought I would like to have a couple of those if possible is because um, sometimes we get um, bases here for uh, to for to do demos and uh, stuff like this and if they have some sort of a weird shaped body so they're not like a jazz bass which is kind of a p bass which is kind of round at the bottom um, they often don't go in like regular bass stands and the great thing about this is that you can just let me show this you can just put a base put it in here the there's this holder thing snaps together so the base there's no way the base can get out of here except if you lift it up which is really great and um the bottom is shaped like uh nothing special so any kind of like thunderbirds or all these uh real shaped uh, body styles will all work really great with this one so this is the kind of stand you want to use if you just need one stand or two stands or three stands or even if you have a lot of bases and you want to kind of see them all in your room, you have a lot of space and you want to have them exposed, so to say, um, then this is the perfect solution. Another stand we got from König & Meyer, or actually two of them are those right behind me. These are called Guardian 5. Um, these are great if you want to have uh, like a bunch of bases in a very tight space. and. Um, I had similar stands before um, from another company and these were really crappy. So they were fine, so you could put your bases in, everything is good. But I always had a problem that the bases were able to move in these stands. So if something happens, if you hit a base like this, it would just fall, hit the next one, leave scratches and whatever. And the great thing with the König & Meyer stands is that every base has like a separated compartment so there's no way the bases will ever touch uh, each other and they make these for electric guitars and electric bases and they also make similar ones for acoustic instruments which is of course a bit wider and these are the best stands i ever had because they the production quality is is insane and they have this rubber stuff going on um that uh yeah I, I'm not afraid to put even the most expensive bases in there because I know they are safe. As I said, uh, König Meyer is also producing microphone stands and one thing I got from them which is really important for the studio here is uh, a stand you can't see here, but you can see here. It's this one. It's, it's a huge uh, boom studio whatever stand and the great thing about this that it has this weight on the other side so I can have like a heavy microphone here and it doesn't move at all. With the old uh, stand I was using before, which was also a König & Meyer and also really heavy duty stand, but it always had a problem. If I extended the, the boom thing too long, then it started dropping at some point. So this is really the perfect solution for studios if you need um, stands for overhead stuff or for vocal recording like I'm doing it right now. 
Another stand we got from Kunji Meyer is this one. This is like a super tiny microphone stand and it's called Soft Touch. I don't know exactly why. But uh, these are great uh, for miking amps and stuff like this. Because uh, sometimes when we are recording uh, especially amp demos or pedal demos with distortion pedals and stuff like this, you don't want to use a DI signal. So you definitely have to use an amp and you have to mic a speaker cabinet and these are great because these are exactly in the, 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 the height you need for this. Thanks again to Kündig Meyer. I'm very happy to be sponsored by this brand and, and their great products. And now let's start with the fun part. Uh, here are the current uh, bases we are using on the Basable.com studio to demo pedals, to demo amps and just to check stuff out. So um, see you in a moment and uh, have fun. <laughs> The bass you've just heard, this one is a Torillo uh, four-string prototype bass. It's not really a Torillo model, it's just a bass um, Tomic. The, the Luffy of Torillo bass is for, uh, built for himself. And um, Tomic is a good friend of mine and he's living just a few blocks from here. And um, he's coming here every other day just for a short bass chat and to have a coffee and to just check some stuff out if I have some new uh, whatever here to, to make demos and so uh, one day he brought this bass and, I've, and he said uh, can I leave it here I have to go to the uh, to the city and do some stuff and I thought okay sure um, this is a good place to leave bases so why not and um, one thing turned to the other this bass was here for a couple of weeks and after a couple of days I picked it up and played a couple of notes and I thought hey this is this is really interesting this is uh, actually sounding very good and it's very very different from all the other jazz bass type of basses that I actually have which are the Sandberg uh, California TT models and I like these basses a lot because they have this uh, huge uh, tone they're very clear and open and punchy in your face and this is in the in the field of jazz bass sounds the complete opposite it's very warm sounding it's very um, midi and bassy and uh, it's it, there's not so much shining in the treble going on like like the Sandberg. So this is um, a bass you want to use for 60s stuff for all Motown kind of sounds and yeah I fell in love with this bass and uh, I had to buy it. I actually hate the way it's aged. I'm, I'm a fan of aging. There's, I have no problem with this artificial aging stuff but uh, this looks ugly uh, but I guess Next time when I'm visit visiting my friends from Sandberg, I I will uh, let them finish this thing entirely. However, uh, it's very simple. Um, it's an older body, maple neck, uh, rosewood fretboard. Uh, it's passive. It actually doesn't even have uh, controls. It's just one for balance between both pickups. And these are just here for the sake of the complete look, but they do nothing. and. This bass is equipped with two Nordstrand uh, big singles and these are single coils which come in these bigger housings like Sopa pickups and um, I like these uh, pickups a lot. I also had them in other basses uh, before and these, uh, yeah, I'm personally a big fan of single coil sounds and the big singles sound a bit bigger. Maybe that's the, the, the reason why they called it like this and um, we will uh, do a demo for a couple of other not 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 strong pickups in a couple of weeks. So um, then we will see how it sounds with other pickup designs. I'm looking forward to this because I like this bass a lot, and um, we will see uh, what it will be like. So uh, that's it. Great bass, um, Torillo bass is great. Luffier from Germany. Um, check it out. It's uh, it's good stuff. <laughs> This is a bass you've probably seen before. This is my uh, F bass, uh, VFP55P. I don't know the, what's the exact model name, it doesn't matter. It's a F bass from Canada and it's their take on the P bass topic. And 
I'm a huge fan of P basses. I like this warm and 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 kind of dirty, muddy sound. And uh, I've always dreamed about a five string because I I'm basically a four string player, but uh, I like the feel and the sound of five string basses. And I always thought. Uh, the P bass actually is a great bass to 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 do something with five strings, and so I got this opportunity to uh, to get this bass built for me, and so I I went for it. And um, this is also an alder body maple neck. Um, this one has uh, Aguilar uh, pickups in it. It's also passive uh, hip shot hardware, and this extremely sexy uh, root beer finish, which I like a lot. I'm very much into brown uh, finishes. Don't ask me why, I don't know. However, this bass is just amazing. Um, I've been in contact with uh, Marcel, the uh, the son of the, the founder uh, um, from, from F-Base and we never met before because he's living in, in Canada, I'm living here in Germany and we just uh, had to talk about what I like, like for neck sizes, neck shape and stuff like this. and. Um, so there was no way I could go there and try different shapes and stuff like this. I just had to describe what I'm looking for and we didn't talk about numbers. I didn't say I like like five inch this and that and whatever and this degree and I just described what I liked and it turned out perfect. It's, it's, it couldn't have been better if I was there and stood next to these guys when they shaped the neck. So this is like big, big, big thumbs up for F-Base for really listening to their customers and really trying to achieve uh, what, what the bass players are looking for. Um, it still has a bit of this new bass kind of sound to it, so it needs to be played a bit more in future to, yeah, to kind of settle. Uh, new instruments always have this new instrument sound. I hope you, you know what I'm talking about. And um, however, I like this bass a lot. This is uh, my P bass of choice now. I have a couple, a couple of other bases and uh, I've I had so much more but this is the highlight on the on the P base topic so far at least on the fretted uh, side of things so uh, thanks again to F base for this base um, I'm enjoying it almost every day uh, I love it <laughs> This is a very special bass uh, from Nikola Adamovic in the Netherlands and he built this bass for me. This was a custom order and this was a, like a long, long, long dream. I had to have a really, really good five string single cut uh, fretless bass because I had a similar bass a couple of years ago, a six string and I used to play in a reggae band for a couple of years and I played the six string and it sounded huge and 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 uh, just perfect for me but i always struggled with the with the high c string i never used it and um, so i started to play it uh, not that often anymore and one day i sold it because I, I i realized that it's not sounding as good anymore because uh, with basses you have to play them if you want them to sound really good you can't just take a bass out of the box and it's it's perfect so you have to play it you have to play it and play it and play it and the more you play it and the better it will sound. So this is the reason why I had to sell it. And since this day when I sold the bass culture, um, I was dreaming about a really good five string. And this is the fulfillment of all my fretless dreams uh, in this fretless genre. Fretless is of course a wild field, but uh, um, this is just perfect. Um, what's a bit special about this bass, it has a short scale. So it's a 33 inch scale. It's a bit shorter than uh, regular necks which uh, results in a, in a bass sound that has more lows. So there's, um, it's really cool if you want to kind of simulate upright bass sounds or play really like sub bass stuff. And this is great for this. And um, I'm using Labella um, James Jamison flats on this bass. And these are really big. The G string is a 50 and the uh, E string is a uh, 110. I don't even know what a B string is, but um, it works really great together. Again, this is uh, not, not a bass that you will hear very often or see very often in our videos because it's a fretless bass and René, who's playing almost all the demos here, is not really a fretless player, but uh, 
this is the base that I'm enjoying for myself when I go out for sessions and uh, stuff everywhere where fretless basses will suit in the sound and the situation, then I bring this bass and I just love it. This, um, it's it's kind of, when, when I'm using it, it's kind of producing some sort of P-bass sounds as well. So this is what I'm going for, I'm mostly using the neck pickup in a, in a single coil uh, position with a bit uh, tone rolled off and this is just uh, very very lovely and uh, yeah this is a base it's, it's a dream and I don't know too much about the woods he was using to be honest there's a couple of things you can recognize this is maple and it has purple heart stripes and the top is also purple heart um, but uh, Nicola is using a lot of woods you uh, other Lufius uh, don't use and they are not really common for uh, instrument building and uh, if you want to learn more about this there's a huge uh, feature video on, on this channel where I'm interviewing Nicola and talk about all this stuff he's doing and uh, just check this out there you can learn everything you might want to learn about these spaces however um, this is uh, this is a true a true love for me to have this space and it's a it's a great honor for me to to own one of these Here's my California uh, TT4 uh, from Sandberg Guitars, also a German brand. And um, this is particular one is a masterpiece uh, model. And masterpiece means they have uh, different uh, grades of aging. So they have like soft aged and hardcore aged. And masterpiece is um, just insane. Just look at it. This is, um, I, I think that Sandberg is doing the best aging job on, on the world. I've never seen... Um, other other uh, luthiers who are doing a similar good job when it comes to making artificial uh, beaten up stuff however and this bass sounds just insane and just look at the neck and this it feels lovely i like the the feel of the worn out um, finish and but the real crazy thing about this bass is that um I have a lot of guys here who just come to the studio and to record some stuff and they try all the bases usually and I don't really really talk about uh, these bases uh, that much because I just want them to, to, to try them by themselves without being kind of influenced by me what's good or not so they should try it out by themselves and find the one they want to use for their recordings and in like nine out of ten cases we are ending up with this bass and everybody just sits down and, and say this is just insane i don't know why i don't know what's so special about this particular one um it's an it's in swampish body maple neck uh klopman pickups passive uh, an easy go to uh, bridge i don't like these uh heavy kind of sandberg bridges um sound wise so i prefer like this simple fender type of um way to build chess bases and uh, however this space is just uh, it's insanely good and this is the reason why we use it almost in every video when you when we are doing uh, amp and, and pedal demos um, i hope all of you ever get a chance to try this one out so if you meet at uh, any kind of uh, like the warwick base camp i mostly have this base in my car just ask me if you can try it out um, I will probably have it there and uh, then you get a chance. However, uh, this is like the number one. This is this is the last base standing if everything, uh, if the world went down and I have to grab one base to take it with me, it will definitely be this one. And um, some stuff is a bit weird, like this one, or here's a big hole, because um, uh, w when I bought this base, I already had like three of those, like similar Sandberg bases, and I I am at the Sandberg factory like every couple of months to discuss some uh, stuff. I manage um, the Facebook page for them and some other stuff, some marketing stuff, 
public and artist relations and uh, so I have to go there um, now and then and one day Holger the, the owner of Sandberg just threw this body at me and I thought he's crazy but um, it's so damn lightweight it weighed nothing com at, at least compared to the other bodies of, of a similar sandbag basis and I thought okay it would be really nice to have a swamp ash with a maple neck this kind of Marcus Millerish kind of sound and uh, so I selected the neck that feels great for me and then they put it uh, completely together and combined with the club one pickups which are in my opinion the best um, jazz bass pickups if you like this vintage uh, Fender old school type of sounds and um, however uh, this is uh, this is a lovely instrument and uh, this will stay with me hopefully forever so um, this is a dream and uh, everybody who who is able to to own a bass um, that he just thinks it's so perfect there's that there's no way uh, something similar to this could be better than um, you are in a perfect situation and I'm very happy to be in this situation and but uh, however you have heard this enough uh, on channel on different videos so uh, let's move on to the to the other ones <laughs> This bass is a, a Sun with two N, uh, a Mustang. And this uh, Sun used to be an, a Fender brand in the early 80s and they produced these only for two years or so. And these were basically like the, the lowest entry uh, cheap uh, starter models you could buy. And uh, actually in Germany they were, they were sold in like um, like like this uh, catalog ordering stuff when you buy like starter kits with a cheap amp and a cheap bass and this war, was one of these and I bought this a couple of years ago from eBay because I wanted to try out the fretless uh, P bass this is fretless because the previous owner um, put the frets out and um, I sent this bass to a friend of mine uh, who is working at Sandberg Guitars and he evened out the fretboard for me and did some fixing and I got me a new pickguard because the old one was broken and when it was finally put together and I played it for the first time I couldn't believe how good it sounds and um, I have so many P bases or I, I don't really have too many P bases but I had a lot of P bases in my life and for some reason this kind of kills them all I don't know what it is it has this mojo going on I don't know if it's something like special frequency ranges that this has that others don't have or I don't know I really don't know I just can say this is the best sounding bass I've ever had um, which is kind of sad because some of these basses are really expensive but um, this is but but this, at, at the end it's a nice lesson because uh, you really learn you don't have to pay like shitloads of money to get a good bass uh, if you buy old bases like this one, you will have to, yeah, you will have some issues. Like I have this one, this is humming like crazy, no matter what I do. So I definitely need to get this to a, to a good luthier and to get like the craziest shielding around the space. So it, it will stop at least a bit of the crazy humming uh, that it's doing. And the sound sample you've just heard had uh, like, um, like a denoiser on it to get at least the worst humming parts out of the sound. But uh, in a live situation when I'm, when I'm going to two sessions or whatever and I bring this bass everybody's just turning the head and looking what what's going on because it sounds just better than everything else I don't know why and it's not uh, I've bought a couple more of these because I thought this is like the, the secret holy grail the the true vintage uh, grail that's flying under the collector's radar but it's not really like that I bought two more of these which are still threaded and the first one was kind of nice uh, but but didn't really meet the expectations and the second one which I still have is uh, actually sounding also really good but it's completely broken and built up and I'm not even sure if a guitar builder uh, can fix it so I have to find it out in the next time however uh, this is this is uh, this is a crazy base uh, it's just too good for this world and it's kind of kind of a pity that's a fretless because that means we can't use it very often and I would like to have this like nice warm p bass tone in more of the videos but uh, however 
this is one of the bases uh, that's uh, kind of proving that yeah you don't have to spend too much money to have a good base sometimes the cheapest are just good enough or even perfect so that's it <laughs> This is an Ibanez ATK uh, 300 and ATK actually stands for ATTACK and uh, this is one of the earlier models, it was built in 97 or so and comes with an ash body, maple neck and has this typical uh, ATK pickup with three coils in it and you can switch in different configurations and Many people say that these ATK bases are the Stingray killer bases from Ibanez and I don't really know what they're talking about. It definitely is a very good sounding base and I like it a lot for the way it plays and it sounds. But uh, I wouldn't compare it to a Music Man because Music Man is... I don't want to say it's a whole different level because um, it's, it's definitely good and this is also a really good base but uh, it's just not something different. And what I like about this one is it has... The, the music mans are kind of, they have a lot of top and a lot of treble going on and they're very punchy and compared to a music man this is more on the vintage kind of thing and it has more of warmth and mid crawl and um, I like to play this bass a lot but for recording I have to say it's not my favorite uh, bass of choice because um, it has, it always sounds like out of phase, I don't know what it is. And it's not the problem of this particular model, it's a common ATK thing and um, it sounds great in a, in a band, it sounds great through an amp, but if you're recording like straight the eye stuff, you have to put like a lot of um, EQing on it or if you have a good tube pure amp or you're using amp simulations and this is what we just did with the audio file you just heard, I used it with... Um, a bunch of stuff, compressors and, and a lot of EQ and it sounds great like this, but this is not really for recording a plug and play bass. This is much more something you want to use for live stuff. And uh, so uh, don't get too familiar with this one because it's already sold. I will ship it in the next days to its new new owner. And I bought it because um, I had one of these uh, when, I, when I started playing bass. It was, I think, my second or my third bass. It was... Uh, Exactly the same model, just uh, with a with a rosewood neck and a rosewood fretboard, and it was fretless. And I played it for a couple of years, mainly in my gospel choir I used to play with back in the days. And um, yeah, it was kind of, kind of a nostalgic uh, thing to 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 get me another one. And as I said, it's it's a great bass. Um, it's a, definitely a great bargain, especially the old ones. You can buy them like I bought this for two hundred fifty bucks or so. So it's really not expensive. And it's it's great quality, but yeah, I don't really need it anymore because I have this one. This is a Music Man Sterling uh, bass, and the most common bass for Music Man is of course the Stingray. Uh, which you definitely know from like Tony Levin and, and uh, Pino Palladino, you played the, the fretless uh, version. And I, I, was, I wasn't a huge Music Man fan for many, many years because um, I kind of appreciated how they sound and, and, and how they feel and everything, but I never played one that really kind of catched me and I thought, hey, I want to be your bass by me and you will be happy with me through all the years. And I tried, I tried really hard because I am, because I always was kind of, I'm not really a bass collector, but I, I, I appreciate to have options uh, for, for yeah, different kind of sounds and different kind of aesthetics uh, on the musical side of things. So um, I never really found one that made me really happy and uh, what I do every, not every year, but but uh, what I definitely did in the last years is uh, I pick one topic uh, of basses or of also other like amps and stuff um, that I'm not so familiar with and I want to kind of dig deeper into this topic and learn more about these instruments. So I have a couple of instruments that I sell 
and use this money to buy yeah, whatever I'm looking for at this time. And I believe it was two or three years ago that I had my big Music Man year and I bought um, a five-string Stingray fretless and uh, this one. And I bought this just for just to try uh, to spend a bit more time with a Sterling because I kind of prefer the Sterling over the Stingray because it has this chest bass uh, type of neck. It's not this not this chunky profile and it's not so wide like like these all P bases like um, the fostering Music Man's used to be or still are. And the fun part with this bass is I put it off the box, played it for the first time and I thought that's the one. I, I can't stop this uh, thing with uh, learning to get uh, getting to learn Music Man because uh, I found the one I was looking for and what I realized when I played it for uh, for a couple of times in, in rehearsals and sessions that it's um, it's kind of similar to a P bass for some reason but it's it's sounding more it's more punchy and more direct and of course it has the active EQ and you can you have way more options to shape the tone but it still has this kind of I don't know yeah, it's always hard to describe uh, uh, sounds and, and what makes a sound uh, sound like it is. However, um, this is a this is a great bass and I, I, I love to play it. And uh, since I have this, I'm also a bit he kind of healed with the Music Man thing because uh, recently I discovered a lot more uh, Music Man basses that I really liked, especially the new Saber uh, bass, the Classic Series model which uh, Lars Lehmann is playing and uh, this is also a really great one but for me uh, this topic I, I don't really need much more because uh, this is all I I would ever need uh, in, in this in this field. Um, maybe I will try the Stingray pickup one day because um, at Friedland the bass whisperer told me when I met him like a couple of months ago that uh, the which I didn't know that the um, the Stingrays have different pickups than the, the Sterlings and the Stingray pickups are a bit, uh, they have a bit more balls, so to say, they have a bit more output and maybe I will try this out and I don't really feel that I have to improve the sound of this, but um, it would be interesting to, to get, yeah, like, yeah, to, to try some other stuff out. However, um, this, is, uh, this is a nice bass, it's nicely beat up, it's very well played, it, it's so... I believe it's, it was made in '95, and the woods like the the these roasted maple necks music man is doing nowadays. It's really dark and well played, and I also really love this purple finish. It's just uh, it's a lovely instrument, and uh, I hope uh, it will be will be here for many many more years, and I will never get kind of kind of a day when I feel that I don't need it anymore because it's really great and. Uh, it's one of the bases that I personally uh, play uh, more often than uh, the most other ones because it's super comfortable and I like the tone. And uh, that's it. Let's uh, check the next one. <laughs> Sandberg California Wasabi Base. Uh, it's the ugly one. Let's uh, let's name it because uh, it really looks just ugly, which I don't care about because uh, all I care about uh, with bases is how they sound and how they play. And uh, when we are on this side of things, I don't have to any complaints with this base. Um, this is actually the first Sandberg I ever had because um, when I started, I believe, no, it was even before I, I worked for Sandberg Guitars, when I was uh, back uh, with Music Schmidt, the, the shop in, in Frankfurt, Germany, where I used to work before I started BassTheVote.com, I used to visit Sandberg uh, even then, uh, every other month to just hang out, have fun, let try some stuff out in the workshop and I even built me a bass at this time. And one day I picked this bass up from, from the wall because it was just hanging in the showroom and played it and I really liked uh, how it sounded and, and how it felt. So um, I bought this bass back then and this is kind of the mother of all the other uh, Sandberg basses I had uh, later which, which followed because this is the bass where I tried 
different bridges, different pickups, and um, and now this base is fretless. I don't know what uh, happened that day when I decided to make this base fretless, but um, it's cool because um, this is a maple board and this is something you don't see very often on fretless bases because the most fretless bases have uh, ebony fretboards or rosewood. And uh, but it's actually quite fun because this bass has kind of a way punchier sound than all the other fretless basses that I have. And uh, I also this is also the only fretless that I'm uh, using with uh, round one strings. And the fun part is when you're when you're playing this in a band, you can make this one sound like a fretted bass. So you can play this like for an entire set without anyone recognizing that it's a fretless, even if there's a whole bunch of bass players in the audience. And but if you want to have like a nice slide or like fretless type of vibratos you can do it with the space and this is like a nice between the worlds of fretted and fretless basses kind of base and uh, one day i gave it to another friend who's who's uh, who's also a luthier and i thought this base is ugly already and i need a filler for the fret slots cut i believe for the first year when when we put the frets out i the, the, the slots were just open and it was was crazy but I just want first to to try it out how it sounds and if this works as a fretless bass for me and it did so I yeah it, it had to be done to to get the, the the fret slots filled and I thought I would like to have something fluorescent or something that's uh, shining in the dark and it should be green because this bass is already ugly and already green so Let's do it. And uh, yeah, my friend said, yeah, sure, no problem. I have some stuff here I can put in there. It will work when I mix it with some uh, uh, epoxy stuff. And uh, yeah, he called me a couple of weeks later and said, ah, I kind of messed your base up. And I thought, there's no way you can mess this base. You can mess this base up because it's, uh, it's ugly as hell. But he really did, first of all. It's not shining in the dark. <laughs> he didn't manage that. And uh, color actually soaked into the fretboard, so this is uh, this is uh, yeah, it, it can't get much worse. But I don't care. Um, it's green. That's fine with me. It's looking ugly anyway, and uh, it's playing like a dream. And later I had a black one, a black one of these uh, Sandberg bass, and this had like the most perfect neck shape I've ever put my hand on, and. This was kind of chunky compared to the other one. So next time I, when I when I visited Sandberg, I brought both bases and and um, asked one of the guys if he can kind of do this neck again to send it down to the shape of the other one. It's not ex turn, uh, didn't turn out exactly the same, but it feels very lovely now. And this is also kind of weird. There's actually no finish on the neck at all. It's just a plain wood and it's feeling very rough and, and it's getting of course very dirty which again the space is ugly it doesn't really matter uh, but uh, this feels actually really really good I like this a lot and because when, when you're sweating you never kind of kind of uh, when you when you have a back of the neck with a lot of lacquer finish on it and you're sweating a lot it might happen that you just get stuck at some points and you your the, the palm of your hand will get stuck at some point and you want to move there and it's just not working the way you want or you even slip off because it's too wet and uh, this kind of finish which means no finish at all is uh, the perfect solution for that i believe everyone who is kind of familiar with how to treat wood will just uh, say dude you're crazy but i don't care as i said this base is messed up already it was always messed up so uh, why not even mess it up a bit more and as long as it sounds as good as it does uh, i don't care and um this is this is the bass I'm bringing to uh, the sessions when I'm playing with my brother and he's a drummer and sometimes we meet uh, to to for a weekend and uh, just lock lock us ourselves in in the rehearsal room and I bring a lot of effects and we just have fun for 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 some days and this is the bass I'm I'm using there most of the time because. Yeah, it, like I said, it's the fretless fretted thing. I love to play fretless basses and uh, this bass has the perfect down, uh, amount of dirt and and bleh, stuff in its sound that it's just great. Uh, I like it. However, it's ugly, but it's mine and I like it. And uh, that's it.
Those who are following uh, Basedable.com for a bit longer might be familiar with this one because I believe it was like in December 2012, um, the guys from Mayons contacted me and Mayons is a Polish brand and they uh, said, hey, we like what you're doing with Basedable.com and we would like to build you a base. So just send us the specs and we will build it. And I thought at this time it would be a good idea to because Basedable.com Of course, I'm, I'm, I'm producing all the stuff. I'm, I'm the guy who is doing all the videos and I have, I'm working together with René and a couple of other guys who are playing for the, um, in the videos. And I, I'm working with a lot of different artists to, to, to do stuff. But uh, I always thought Basedable.com is a community. It's, it would be nothing with, without the, the audience, so with, with you. Basically, so uh, I thought it would be a nice idea to to design a base together, and we didn't really design the shape. But this is a um, slogan model, uh, I believe, from the guy called Steve Logan, whoever this is. Um, it's his signature base, but I picked this shape because I really liked it. And then uh, we together decided on the woods, the uh, the top, and different stuff, and. Um, This is a maple body, winger neck with maple stripes, winger fingerboard, EMG pickups. Um, I kind of decided on those back in the day because uh, I like uh, active EMG pickups a lot and uh, I didn't have a base with those pickups for a long time and so I thought neck through four string would be a great base to, to do this kind of stuff. and. Uh, It turned out really, really nice because um, I didn't expect much because I've never played a Mayons before and I I just thought, okay, with this wood combination, we, we can't do anything wrong because uh, what we all together decided on, on the woods was was a great thing. I'm personally not a huge fan of these uh, birds, I kind of tops, I like more plain, easy, uh, like, like more simple type of woods, but it doesn't really matter. Um, this base is uh, is great when I when I picked it up or the, at at the music messer and and came back home I brought it to the first session and always when I when I get bases here for reviews and for demos and stuff um, if I go on a session or to a rehearsal um, I bring these bases just to check them out with a couple of songs how they how they work in the band uh, context and how they play uh, standing because. Basically, when I'm testing stuff here, I'm sitting and I'm listening only through an amp. So you get a very different impression when you're playing a bass in the band than when you're playing it by yourself. And this was the first time I ever brought a bass to a session that I didn't put down for the entire day or for the entire evening. Because mostly I bring a bass, I play it for a couple of numbers and then put it away and, and, and play the basses that I usually play. Um, but this one just got me instantly. and. It plays really great back uh, when when I got it. I played mostly jazz basses, so these the Sandbergs at this time. And uh, jazz basses are not really the most comfortable designs. They sound great, and we are all very familiar with how they sound and how they look. Because this is like the tradition of the bass guitar as we know it. But uh, these kind of boutique basses, like like the. Um, thing where I would put this bass, um, they are of course much more designed for being comfortable and having a couple of advantages to them. And um, I was so stunned by how easy this bass plays and, and uh, I'm not really like a super technical player, I'm more like an easy groove dude. Um, but this bass made me play stuff that I wasn't able to play on my other basses before. So that's uh, what I really appreciate this bass for. and. Uh, We use it uh, not very often because this is actually a base we use for drop tunings, which we of course don't need too often. And uh, but it works really great for this because of the neck through thing, and we mostly have it down on on a D tuning or a C sharp or something like this with um, these uh, gully drop tune strings. And um, I prefer the P bass because. Again, I'm sort of a P-Bass guy, I prefer the P-Bass pickup. The bridge pickup is, in my opinion, placed a bit too far to the bridge, so I would prefer, or I would probably use it more often, it was a bit closer to the neck, but uh, 
I believe that Mayones is uh, building a lot of bases for metal players, or at least that's where where I see uh, Mayones bases very often, like like all the Bianica. Uh, you probably know um, he's he's a Mayones endorser and he's playing a lot of hard rock and metal stuff and. This base is great in his hands or the bases he's playing and of course he's also doing a lot of other stuff and it's working well but I believe this metal genre is is where my own has the most of its customers and for these kind of guys this placement really makes sense because you want like a really uh, like a sharp sound that has not too much bass but a lot of attack and a lot of treble and something that really punches and hits and but as I said I'm more of a Easy guy, I I like the E and the A string. And uh, however, it's a very lovely bass. Uh, check check Mayons out; they make great stuff. And uh, thanks again for this one to Mayons. And it even says uh, bassthewall.com on the headstock decal. So that I guess that's something. <laughs> Uh, this is the base uh, that gets uh, usually hate comments instantly as soon as I uh, hold it in the camera. So uh, let me give you a couple of seconds to write a hate comment down. Oh, just kidding. Um, this is a Music Box uh, Space Ranger. Uh, Music Box is, um, is a, a brand from New Jersey. And uh, this is actually uh, way better than it looks. I know it's it's a weird looking bass and it's definitely supposed to look weird. So nobody designs a horn like this on accident. This is supposed to um, to uh, yeah create attention in one way or the other. And the headstock is of course the same. It's just uh, it's just weird. However. Um, this bass is uh, also a medium scale, uh, 32 inch, uh, so it has a lot of uh, deep frequencies going on. I'm also using it with uh, flat horn strings, with the R's on this one, which works uh, really great together. And I actually uh, like these kind of uh, vintage short scale basses, like the Hofner, uh, like the Beetle bass, or... I don't remember the uh, the other ones that I like. The other ones that I like, you know what I'm talking about. However, um, I had uh, like like one of these uh, Hofner bases, but I always missed like a bit of uh, bottom end on them because they are semi semi hollow and they have this short scale and they are kind of yeah they have a very special sound. So they, I believe they are or not. I believe I know they are great for pick playing and and for a couple of styles, but. We never really got warm, so I thought that it was a, one of the club bases. And then I got this from Music Box for some reason. I don't, still don't know, really know why. And uh, I thought this is this is actually the, the, like the, like a great combination of the short scale, the vintage type of sounds. They have kind of humbuckers in it that are not too hot, so you can create this kind of warm vintage stuff. And but it has a solid mahogany body, so this is uh, this is. Uh, in my opinion, way better than these semi-acoustic um, constructions. And as weird as this bass looks, um, it plays really great and it sounds really nice for these particular sounds. Um, but uh, you don't have to like it. Uh, nobody has to. Uh, but uh, maybe you can appreciate uh, what it sounds like. And the only thing that kind of bothers me with this bass is the switch, because uh, every time as I said a couple of times, I'm a neck pickup guy, and every time I turn the the uh, tone control, I switch the switch. So, uh, but uh, yeah, I don't touch it too often, so I don't care. Uh, I like this bass actually a lot, and uh, you don't have to. <laughs> Yes, and then there is this. Uh, don't ask me. I, I don't know. It's a it's a twelve string bass. That means it's basically a regular four string, but it has for each string two strings that are one or two octaves uh, higher. So it's. 
kind of the same uh, idea, like a 12 string uh, guitar. And uh, this is, of course, much more like a, like a fun bass. This is nothing you want to bring to, to a regular gig where you would bring a jazz bass or something. But um, sometimes if you want to create some sounds, if you have, for example, like a solo bass track with a nice solo and a nice uh, chords and harmonics, and you can use one of these basses to create um, a lot of stuff going on in the background, because with these high octave strings, which are of course on the guitar range, um, it has a lot of overtones. And when, when this plays, I believe it, or not I believe, I know it, it actually sounds better if it's not perfectly tuned. The bass strings should be, of course, in the right spots. But if the, when, the, when the octave strings are kind of slightly above or slightly underneath the, the perfect tuning, then it creates this kind of wobbly thing and, and, and you hear even more overtones. And uh, it, we made a demo uh, a couple of months ago with the space and uh, check it out. I just, this is one of my favorite demos we've ever made because, yeah, it's, it's not a regular bass. It's not the bass you want to use for regular stuff, but uh, the stuff you can do with it uh, is, uh, sounds really impressive and I like this a lot. This is not really a bass I pick up very often because of course it's special, but uh, for some, uh, yeah, for some uh, circumstances it's uh, just the right icing on the cake. And uh, Music Box sent this bass to me uh, to review it and they, they just uh, let me keep it, which uh, which I'm thankful for because uh, it's a nice toy, but um, yeah, it's a trail string. <laughs> it's, it's something special and uh, those of you who like this stuff will will have one of these already anyway. So um, it's, it's a fun base and that's all I can say about it. So uh, that's basically it. I have a couple of more bases like for example this one. Uh, a really beautiful old Avidus Roadster, but this one and the Sima I showed you in the opening scene and another Sandberg, um, they need to see the guitar dock first before we can use them again or especially this one is still new. It's an old bass, but, uh, but I just bought it a couple of uh, weeks ago. It, 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 first it needs to prove if it's really working for what we're doing here and if not it's going because um, as I already said, I'm not really a bass collector. I, I run the studio here and we, uh, of course, want to have different uh, basses for different sounds and different aesthetics. But um, I'm not collecting basses just because they're nice and beautiful or whatever, because I, I, I like instruments that I really can use. And you might think that this is a crazy amount of basses, but uh, it is, of course. It's, 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 it's more basses than one person could need, but uh, just look out for some bass collectors, what crazy collections they have. And I know a couple of guys, they, you can take one of their basses that they own and it's more worth than all the basses together. So um, this, is, uh, this is kind of a, more of a useful collection here, uh, basses that are really used all the time. And yeah. That's it. I guess that's all I can uh, say right now. I hope you enjoyed this little video. I, you, if you made it to this point, you're one of the brave, strong, based on what .com followers. I really appreciate that. And uh, if you have any questions about any of these bases, let me know in the comments. And again, if you want to see more videos like this, talking about the amps we are using, about the pedals, about recording setup, whatever, just let me know in the comments. And uh, I will see if enough people are interested in this stuff, uh, we can do more of these videos. Um, that's it. Uh, thanks again to Künch and Meyer for this great stance. And uh, thanks for tuning in and uh, see you next time. Bye.